Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Hondo. I realize that I may get new viewers from time to time. I, I make these videos and I just assume it's the same people again and again. So I don't introduce myself and I don't catch everybody up. You know, I don't. I don't do long introductions and give people. Uh, all the backstory that I should give, you know, all these YouTubers, they make videos as if every video is their first video, and that's probably a smart thing to do, but anyway, my name is Hondo, and this is a reform channel, and most of what I do is complain about people like Andy Stanley and call them unbelievers and heretics, so if you like that, stick around. If you don't like that, do whatever you want. But Andy Stanley popped up on my YouTube feed because I've watched a few of his videos and he made a series of speeches called The Fundamental List and so I, part seven popped up and I decided I'd watch part one. And what I thought was important was how he decides what is fundamental. So he's basically a red letter Christian. And by that, I mean that he only cares about what Jesus says. He only cares about Christ's words in the gospel. And so Christ, his, his picture of Christ being this effeminate man who loves everyone and accepts everyone. And uh, who knows, maybe he uh, says some mean things once in a while, but mainly he's just really nice. Or just a really good guy. So again, Andy Stanley is a moralist. What? must one believe in order to be a faithful follower of Jesus? Not what must one do. We talk about the do part all the time. And if you're new to our church or you're watching online for the first time, this is a group of people who aren't just about believing, we're about doing, because doing is what makes a difference in the world, not just believing. Believing doesn't make any difference. He believes in doing good things. And that's the key to Christianity. That's how to be a Christian is you do good things. But he's gonna talk about things that we believe. Also, all the things that he's going to talk about are judged by his idea of what the Bible should be. He has decided that the most important part of Scripture is the Gospels. And he said this before, that you only need really one Gospel. You can take your pick. The, the question to ask when it comes to, is Christianity something even worth taking seriously or even worth considering, the question is this. Is Matthew, Mark, Luke, or not and, or John a reliable account of actual events? This is the issue. This is the question when it comes to Christianity. Because we only need Christ. I mean, that's true, but not in the way he means it. He means it in that we only, we get to decide what we want to believe. We get to decide what is right and true about scripture. And he likes Jesus. He likes Jesus. He doesn't love Jesus. He doesn't believe in Jesus because he doesn't even try to understand who Christ is. He has already decided who Christ is. And so he doesn't understand that, that God, that Christ is all throughout the entire Bible, that everything in Scripture is about Christ. And so he likes the Gospels because there he's got a, a picture of, of God that he understands, at least somewhat. He's not going to talk about the, the passages where Christ praises God for judging people. He's not going to talk about that. He's not going to talk about the passages where Jesus praises God for not revealing himself to cities uh, in Matthew 13. I guarantee you he's not going to talk about that. He's not going to talk about where Jesus says, You only come to me because I want you to come to me. Because God has... Put it in your heart to come to me. He's not going to talk about that. That doesn't fit with, with who Andy Stanley is. But this is his. This is his entire. I don't know if you can even call it a hermeneutic, but his, his basis for judging what is the best part of Scripture is is only the Gospels. That's what he likes. And again, Stanley was. A disciple, he, he learned about the Bible in large part from Norman Geisler. 
I guess you've kind right. of you've kind of been in, interested generally in apologetics, from what I can tell, for for quite a long time, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, this started for me almost forty years ago, uh, studying under Dr. Norman Geisler in seminary, and um, yeah, it's been a framework for preaching, teaching, ministry, really ever since. And Norman Geisler. He was the judge of scripture. He decided what was right about scripture. He decided that the Bible was true because of science and reason. And so Andy Stanley extends that and says the parts that are true in the Bible are true because of science and reason, because of modern cultural sens sensibilities. And he won't, he won't say that, of course, but obviously that's what he believes because he supports gay. He loves the gay. He bends over to worship the gay, he accepts it, he does not condemn it, he does not trust scripture when scripture condemns homosexuality. And so that's why he is the ju judge of scripture. He decides what is true and what is right about the Bible, because he is wiser than God. Here's what he has to say. And the reasons we know sometimes that these things aren't essential, and this is where we're going, is when you hold them up against Jesus as we find him in the gospels, when you hold them up to the life and the teaching and what Jesus modeled, when you hold them up against the behavior of Jesus, as we're gonna see, when you hold them up against what Jesus prioritized and what Jesus did not prioritize, it becomes clear to you, clear to us, wait a minute, this is just how you do it. This is just what you expect of your people. But that's not fundamental to Christianity. That's not essential to Christianity. That's some sort of add-on. We have quite a few pictures of Christ, actually. I mean, Stanley, he went to seminary. I mean, he should know this. That we have Christ in the Gospels. We also have Christ in Revelation. In Revelation, he is king and judge. And he destroys the wicked. And it specifically tells you who the wicked are in Revelation. But Andy doesn't, doesn't like that because it's very unpopular and it's mean. He is a nice guy. You can tell he's... Everything about him is nice. It is non-threatening. It is effeminate. It is non-condemning. He does not tell people to repent of their sin. He, he even mentioned sin. I've never heard him say anything about you need to repent of your sin. You need to deny this part of you that hates God. You need to put it away. <clears throat> but everything about him is inoffensive, nice, warm, well, falsely warm. It's a fake warmth that just leads you to hell. That's his whole thing. He's the worst kind, one of, probably the worst kind of false teacher. He's very smart, he's very well spoken, he's not, he's not kind of manic like Stephen Furtick, full of, full of, you know, methamphetamine energy. He's older, so maybe he's wiser. So maybe you can trust him, but you can't. And you want to know what is right and what is true, you have to study the Bible. You have to know Scripture. And you have to accept Scripture. Not just read the Bible and, and know what it says, but you have to accept everything that Scripture says. Especially the parts that you do not like. Those are the parts that tell you who you are and, and where you need to change. And... And who God is and the, and the aspects of him that challenge us, we really need to understand. So this is the main problem with Stanley, with the apologists. When you believe that your science and your reason establishes that the word of God is true, you also believe that your reason and your science decides which parts of the word of God, which parts of the word of God are true and which you should believe which you should disregard. It says, do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. And then it says, answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. Those are back to back. Those are right next to each other. I didn't make that up. That's the Bible.
okay? I put it on the screen. You look it up. You don't believe me. Proverbs 26, 4 and 5. Don't answer a fool in his folly. Do answer a fool in his folly. Use a scientific method. We assess this verse. Does the Bible have a contradiction in it? Yes. There it is. It's right there. It's on the screen. And there are guys like Zach Lambert. He's a homosexual pastor in uh, Austin who, who believes the same thing. I mean, I don't know if he's a homosexual, but he's, he supports it. Brendan Robertson is a flaming homosexual. He says that because we have modern, loving, gay relationships, then that we can disregard what the Bible says. And so when you, when you believe that your testimony verifies the Word of God, that your testimony verifies God Himself and justifies who He is and what He says, then you are the authority over the Word of God. Hundo.